The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, Hebrews 4 and 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of of need for every high priest taken from men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer <clears throat> both gifts and sacrifices for sins he can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray since he himself is also subject to weakness. Because of this, he is required as for the people, so also for himself to offer sacrifices for sin. And no man taketh this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest. But it was he who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. 
as he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears, King James says strong cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear, though he was a son. And notice that's the capital. <coughs> he learned obedience by the things he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him, called by God as high priests, according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have become need of milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, Jesus is the high priest, and he is our high priest now. Jesus, when he said in John 19 and 30, he had received the vinegar. He said, it is finished. Jesus said, it is finished. When he said, it is finished. When Jesus said, it is finished, in John 19 and 30, he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. He gave up life. But let me tell you that he did not take a break. When we think of Jesus sitting at the right hand of God, he's not in heaven sitting still, taking a break. What he is doing, what Jesus is doing, is the same thing that the high priest did in the earth, which I've given you an example of, and what the high priest is doing. Remember, this is a pattern forever. What was the high priest doing? The high priest, roll that out here for just a minute, Amen. please, sir. What the high priest do? The high priest stands at the door. He receives gifts and sacrifices. If you just take that little tape down right there, and turn the light on for me real quick. And drop that. The high priest stands at the door and receives both gifts and sacrifices. We are not to say that you and I can ever pay for sin. We can't pay for sin. But what the Lord is calling us is to go and to become a glorious church without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing, which we don't hear a lot talked about. He's coming back for a church without spot. What is a spot? What is a blemish? What is a wrinkle? What is such things or any such thing? He's coming back. He didn't say, I'm coming back for my church, period. I'm coming back for a church without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle or any such thing. Because when you offered up a lamb or a sacrifice, help me out, preacher. Grab me that. When you brought your sacrifice to the Lord, thank you. 
you had to bring him a sacrifice without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle, or any such thing. You could not come. That's what you could not come with a sacrifice that was blemished because he was teaching. When I come to receive my church, I'm coming back. Now, for so many years, we've been told he's just coming back for a church. He's coming back for a church. So he didn't care because he loved me so much he don't care. I'm here to refute that, that we got to be covered with the blood. The, the, the sacrifice had to be without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. The priest, take this, son, the, the blemish, I mean, the, 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 uh, the, the sacrifice had to be examined at the door by the priest, just like right now they're looking over the red heifer and they can't find a good one. And he had to look it over. He didn't just say, okay, thank you, Brother Steve. We'll, we'll take it. We're so desperate here at the Hebrew tabernacle. We'll take it because, well, we just got to have members. Like we Gentile do. Oh, we're just so glad you came. Just so we can say we got a big old mega church. They didn't care about no mega church. This is about God. They didn't care. It wasn't that attitude. And that's what, you see, that attitude got into the Gentile church. Oh, we just, they need y'all. That priest's job was to stand there and examine that sacrifice. How would you like to be that guy? Uh-uh. Uh, Hebrew Stevie, take that back. Somebody had to do that. So what I'm saying is that Jesus is that person in heaven now that is saying, don't bring that. The Holy Spirit is saying that. He's rejecting a lot of what we are throwing up. Hail Mary saying, here, take this. And it ain't working. And so what we do is we turn on each other because the half-hearted stuff we throw at God Amen. don't work. It don't work in our relationships. It don't work in our church. Amen. And God don't return the anointing in place of it. That priest's job was to stand there and say, this, this goat or this bullock that you offering, it ain't no good. Got three legs, Steve. Got one eye. One of the ears ain't proper. Look like it's a retarded goat. Something wrong with it. Where's the tail? Well, it's the best I had, like we do in our church. Uh, God, you can't judge. It's the best I got. I'm sorry. You got to take that back. So Jesus was that high priest. And he is that high priest right now and in heaven. He ain't just sitting there running angels all over glory, bring me a drink. He's sitting there doing the same thing. When we say make an intercession, that's what he's doing. He's sitting as the high priest. He's the high priest, but he's in heaven. He's relocated. When he says, I go to prepare a place for you, that place is being prepared for you in intercession. You the one bringing the building blocks. And the building blocks is the sacrifices that you're making down here. Yeah. If you're bringing him a little sacrifice, that's what it is. He's keeping it in heaven where moth and corruption can't take it. Yeah. Amen. But you're the one bringing the building blocks. He ain't up there building. He building me a mansion over there. He, he ain't building you no mansion. Mansion means dwelling place. And the ain't mansion as in what you think down here. The dwelling place is if you bring him a little bit of your life, you can be saved, yes, so as by fire. Yeah. But that's all you're going to have. See? So Jesus is the high priest up in heaven, and he's the one still that helps us to get into the greater glory of God. See, this ain't about whether I go to church anymore, about whether I'm safe. It's about getting into the glorious place where God wants to unlock to you the secrets of the kingdom. And most folk don't care about that. 
But mediocrity is going to knock you out. Amen. Amen. So, uh, intercession means to come or meet a person or a cause. To pray for others. To vindicate. To commend. To furnish assistance. To accuse or act against the person. That's what Jesus is doing. But he's your high priest and he is in heaven doing the same work that he did in the earth. So what you have got to begin to think about is what am I bringing to him? What am I bringing to him? How am I bringing it to him? And so when we say it ain't nobody's business but God, well spoken. But if you've got to say that, you are saying it with the same attitude that Cain said about Abel. When Cain brought his and the Lord, the Lord didn't receive it like he thought he was. Cain, the Lord says, Cain, what's wrong with you? Why is your, what's wrong with your face? What's your mouth all twisted up about? If you brought your, uh, your sacrifice right, you wouldn't be looking like that. Yeah. See, Cain knew and didn't feel what Abel felt. Because if you bring your sacrifice to God right, I don't care what people are doing, what they say, you be you God will give you joy right in the midst of when everybody else is crying. That's called preparing a table in the presence of your enemies. I'm done. Let's let's move on. Move this out the way. Let's move. That's why he asked Cain, why are you, why are you rough, man? Why are you angry? Because you've paid more attention to Abel. When you bring yours right, you know God is paying attention to you. Amen. You ain't worried about what other folks are saying, what they think, because you're too busy dancing. All right, let's move. Amen. Let me get out the way. <laughs>